there was a big boom and um, I got scared. I got really scared. And then I saw the fire, this big fireball go in the air and we all took off running into the house. On August 6, 2012, Courtney Cummings and her family were in their front yard when a massive fire erupted at the Chevron refinery, just six blocks away. The smoke and toxic fallout sent more than 15,000 residents of Richmond, California to area hospitals with respiratory problems. Investigators later discovered a severe pipe corrosion caused a rupture that sparked the blaze. They also found that Chevron's own inspectors had repeatedly warned the company to replace the aging pipes. Richmond lies just across the bay from San Francisco's glittering Infotech boom. It is a city yoked by heavy industry, where the petrochemical containers and train tracks are hard to miss. It's also a battleground between an entrenched industry and a crusading mayor. You know, really put that organizing effort. Gail McLaughlin is the mayor of Richmond. First elected in 2004 as a Green Party member, she has upended politics as usual by confronting Chevron head on. It's a case of environmental injustice. It's a case of environmental racism. We see how Chevron operates in Nigeria. We see how Chevron operates in Ecuador. They disregard communities that they feel aren't organized enough or aren't empowered enough to fight back. Last fall, Chevron agreed to pay $2 million in fines and pled no contest to six charges, including failing to protect employees from potential harm. Many residents here insist the 2012 fire is emblematic of a willful negligence that dates back decades, one that continues at the expense of low-income minorities who suffer persistent health complications and simply can't afford to leave. According to a 2009 report, about 80 percent of people living within a mile of the Chevron refinery are people of color. A quarter of them live below the poverty line. A Native American single mother of two, Courtney Cummings, has called Richmond home for the past 30 years. She is proud of her community, with one glaring exception, Chevron, the oil giant whose refinery dominates the landscape. I like it here. Richmond's my home. But at the same time, there are other cities where there's not a Chevron in your backyard spewing 24-7 toxins into the air and nobody communicating with you. This sediment is going into our bodies, was going into my children who have no protection except me. That's what makes me sad. The entire family has breathing problems that require them to use inhalers. But Cummings says they're not leaving, and neither is Chevron. The company has operated its 2,900-acre Richmond facility for more than 100 years. Today, it is the city's largest employer and taxpayer, and its presence is felt everywhere, from the hulking storage tanks that dot the hillside to the glossy billboards that line the streets. Its critics complain that very little is being invested in Richmond. So this is all stuff that Chevron stuff here in the neighborhoods around it. While the toxic emissions and headline-grabbing accidents keep taking their toll. One year after the August 2012 fire, the city council, led by the mayor, unanimously voted to sue Chevron for years of neglect, lax oversight, and corporate indifference to safety inspection and repairs. Are you saying that Chevron just doesn't care? Yes, Chevron doesn't care. Chevron is very clear that profits come first. Um, in fact, they have been um, charged with criminal charges, and they admitted to them. I can almost hear people right now saying, oh, there's that green mayor spouting hyperboles about the big bad oil company. Mm -hmm. Why should we take her seriously? Well, because it's the truth. It is a big, bad oil company. They are the ones who are um, bashing the people of Richmond, if you will. So when we push back, we're fighting for our lives. We're fighting for our dignity as a community that has a right to health and well-being. 
Chevron has dismissed the lawsuit as a waste of city resources and yet another example of failed leadership. But the mayor pushed the U.S. Chemical Safety Board to investigate. And in December, the Richmond City Council got a shot in the arm from its staff, which blamed Chevron for what it judged to be a preventable incident. The board went on to recommend sweeping reforms that would compel refinery operators across California to be more proactive in addressing potential risks with greater input from workers and local government. The team proposes to the board the following recommendations. On January 15th, area residents packed City Hall for a hearing on the proposed safety reform. But we call on you to do what is necessary for our rights. If you and the city and these other regulations don't do the job, we'll do the job. Because as we said, there ain't no power like the power of the people. Because the power of the people don't stop, period. And we don't stop this nonsense. In a highly unusual twist, the board refused to adopt the recommendations made by its own staff. We thought it would pass. It's a proactive rather than reactive model of safety. So uh, it was a disappointment. Environmental activists in Richmond say Chevron has a long history of polluting the city with impunity. Henry Clark is the director of the West County Toxics Coalition, an environmental justice group that works on behalf of minorities. Okay. Did uh, Omar see the pictures? Okay, all right. Uh, a lot of people have uh, uh, moved out, not only because of the issues relating to Chevron, but, you know, crime and just lack of investment in the uh, areas. What would you say about the fact that having industry in, in, in towns like this creates jobs? They put, they put millions more back into the state, that they might do a little bit of harm, but ultimately they're doing good as well. Well, they do create jobs and a tax base, but the jobs is not coming to the people here in North Richmond primarily, who's on the front line of the uh, chemical assault. We get the uh, uh, childhood asthma, the cancer and health problems. Chevron and the other workers get the profits. They laugh all the way to the bank and we crawl all the way to the graveyard burying our people. Across the street from Clark's office sits the North Richmond Center for Health. It was funded with a settlement from Richmond-based General Chemical following another major industrial fire in 1993 that filled the air with sulfuric acid. Of how your lungs are working and then later on down the line, we'll do it again. Comparison. Do comparison. Yeah. Peggy Polk is one of many senior patients here suffering from respiratory problems. She blames them on years of toxic exposure. You know, I've developed severe allergies, asthma, lung problems, so... Sometimes I can come outside and the air is so thick, it like, it takes my breath away. I have to go in, do a breathing treatment, do my med healers. John Balms is an expert on environmental health sciences at the University of California, Berkeley, who studies the impact of air pollution in the Bay Area. Though Richmond's childhood asthma rates are twice the national average, he says it's not fair to connect them to the Chevron refinery alone. Many other factors, such as highway traffic and other industrial operations based in the city, play a part. Nevertheless, kids in Richmond do have an a increased risk of developing asthma, and events like the Chevron fire could be an important exacerbating effect. But there's also a vulnerability of the Richmond population uh, because it's of high minority status as well as uh, low socioeconomic status. Chevron refused our repeated requests for an interview. In an emailed statement, spokesperson Melissa Ritchie said the company has worked more than 1.9 million hours to improve refinery safety since the accident. She added that Chevron has provided about $10 million to cover medical costs of affected residents and recently installed a community air monitoring station that can be checked online. We applaud any sincere efforts by Chevron or anyone else to want to do the right thing. But that doesn't mean that we give Chevron a blanket approval to continue to increase their pollution. The mayor has led the drive to hold Chevron responsible. But her term is up in November. And there are concerns that the hard-won momentum to hold the company accountable may be lost. I mean, obviously this town means a great deal to you. Are you worried? 
Yes, absolutely. Um, I know for a fact that Chevron will put more money than ever into this year's electoral season. Um, in 2012, they put $1.2 million into campaigns to attack our candidates. I know that they will be working harder than ever to try and turn us back, but so will we. You're, you're up for the fight. I am up for the fight. I am, we cannot go, go backward. Since the Chevron fire, Courtney Cummings has moved further away from the refinery. But the trauma of that dark day in August still lingers, and it's moved her to speak up. Uh, when it ch Chevron happened, the explosion, it was like, do I take my girls and do we leave? Do we finally say enough and go back home? But we didn't. Why not? Because I have a real big problem when people try to take my voice.